So last class, last video, we were doing 7.1 for trig and 6.1 for pre-cal, which, which is a law of sine. And we're going to continue on that today. Um, the difference of today, last class, we saw when we were using law of sine, we always found ourselves finding the sides first. And these, um, it's a scenario where when you're using law of sine, you find yourself having to find an angle first. Okay? Um, in the textbook, they call it the ambiguous case because it's lengthy. It's not difficult, it is just a much more lengthy process, okay? So the reason why this becomes lengthy is because you have the possibility of no triangle coming out, one triangle coming out, or two triangles coming out. So let me just draw your eyes to these um, little triangles down here in the bottom right. Um, a right triangle is if one of these angles comes out as 90 degrees. So you're used to making this top chart. Let's ignore the bottom one for a second, okay? Um, what we also saw last class is just uh, a triangle that did not have a 90 degree angle, but we still found all the information for it. Now, do you agree that there's a scenario where um, if maybe I open up an angle too big, now this triangle doesn't close? Or if I shorten one of the sides, a triangle won't close? So that's a scenario that can come up that they give us sides that are too small for the angles given that it just won't close and make an actual triangle. Okay? When that happens, that it is no triangle, on your first step, when you set up your law of sine, um, you'll get an error on your calculator. Always double check to make sure that you typed everything incorrectly, but this last note down here, an error on step one in your calculator, means that there's no triangles. It is a case like this where one of the sides may be too short with respect to the angles. Like, obviously, if I made this angle smaller, then it, I can connect it. But if an angle is given too big, then it won't make a triangle, okay? That one, believe it or not, is the fastest one. You get a nice little quick error and you're done with the problem. You literally write as your answer, no triangle. So now the lengthy part is the scenario, and this is something you have to check for every time you find yourself doing law of sine and finding an angle first, is you have to check for the possibility of two triangles. So the motion that you're going to go through is the same as last class. You're going to start off by plugging in what's given, okay? You'll have a match, because in law of sine, we always have a match. But instead of being able to find a side first, you'll find an angle, okay? So you'll set it up, and you'll find that angle. Once you notice that you're finding an angle first, set up the possibility of a second triangle. Notice that I put little ones next to these letters and little twos to represent the second triangle that I'm solving for. Now, once you find that first angle, let's say, for example, you're finding, you find B1 first, you're going to say... Um, 180 minus that B1 to find out what B2 is. That is how you find the angle for the other triangle. And I don't think I said this before, but the givens, whatever, you know how they always give you three and you have to find the other three? The givens will be true for both triangles. So when you fill out the givens here, you can fill out the givens here. Okay? If they give you, let's say A is 70, then you can put 70 on both of these. That is only true for the givens, not the ones that you have to find. Okay? So once I finish finding the angle for the other B2, um, if they are both positive angles, you're good. You have two triangles and you can keep going. If when you do this subtraction of the 180 rule, you get a negative angle, is a negative angle possible? You cross this out and you're only working with one triangle. But if this one also gives you a, pos a positive angle, you finish this one by literally doing the same steps you did last class, and all you're doing is basically work for two questions in one. Okay? So I think this is going to be a lot easier once we start seeing some examples. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here's my first question. I see my givens. I see that A is 81. I see that side C is 12, and side A is 20. Do you see that I have a match with A, but what I'd be left to find is an angle? That is how I know I am working on the ambiguous case, which is a longer one. So automatically, the fact that I know that this is one of those cases where I have a match, so it's law of sine, and I'm looking for an angle, I'm going to want to call all of these one and set up a second scenario.
Now, all of the givens will be the same for both. So that means capital A will still be 81. Uh, little a will be 2, tw excuse me, 20, and little c will be 12, okay? Now, my first step is to try and solve for this c. Now, if you remember from last class or last video, here are the formulas. Um, either one will work. My suggestion was that if you're finding the side, to put the side as a numerator, and if you're finding the angle, to put the angle as a numerator, okay? So since I have a match with a, I'm going to use this full fraction, and I have a piece of c, so I'm going to use this fraction, okay? So let's set that up. I have sine of C, which I don't know, over side C, which is 12, equals sine of angle A, which is 81, over side A, which is 20, okay? Now, I'm going to multiply this 12 over. And now I have sine of C equals 12 times sine of 81 over 20. What do I have to do to get that C by itself? Who remembers when we worked with Sokotoa? You guys remember the inverse button? Yeah, so I need to do inverse sine. So I'm going to put sine with a little negative 1 of this entire fraction. And at this point, it is just going straight to your calculator. So when you plug that in your calculator, it should look something like this. And you get 36.34 degrees. I'm going to round that to 36 degrees. I like keeping my degrees as whole numbers and then my sides output decimals. So I can say that C is approximately 36 degrees. Now I'm going to start color coding for you, okay? I'm going to put the whole first, anytime I'm working with the first triangle, I'm going to put it in pink. And when I work with the second triangle, I'm going to put it in blue just so you can follow along. Another way to keep track if you're not a color coder, I just found C1, so I'm going to put a little 1 next to that C. Okay. All right, so according to the notes we just took, our next step is to find C2. And the way that I do that is by saying C2 is equal to 180 minus C1, which was 36. So C2 is... 144 degrees. Is that a positive value? Can that exist in a triangle? Yes? Okay. Your red flags when you're working with degrees is something past 180 or a negative value because a triangle, all three together have to equal up 180. Okay? So this information was for our blue triangle, our second triangle. Now, my next step is going to be to use the 180 rule for both the pink and for the blue, okay? So for pink, to find B1, I could say 180 minus 81 minus 36, okay? And now when I do this for, let me mark that in pink. I'll solve for that just a moment with my calculator, okay? Now, when I do that for blue, I'm going to go according to the blue. I can say B2 is going to be 180 minus 144 minus 81. Okay? And again, the moment I get something past 180 or negative, I know that's a mistake. So, in your calculators, when you do this subtraction here, you should get 60. 3, okay? 63 is B1, so I'm going to fill that in. And now when I do B2, I get negative 207. 
Can I get a negative angle within a triangle? No. The moment that happens, guys, that this, it means triangle 2 doesn't exist. Okay? So feel free to literally draw a line through your triangle 2. And now all you have to do is finish triangle pink or triangle 1. If this angle would have given you a positive number between 0 and 180, you would have been fine. You would have placed it here. And now you would have just had to solve for both little v's. Okay? So let me finish marking this up. So now all I have to do is finish the pink triangle, which is the first one. What setup would I do to solve for little b? Beautiful. We're going to use law of sine. We're going to get our match. Since I'm looking for a side, I'm going to put the sides on the top now. So I'm going to put 20 over sine of 81 equals little b, what I'm going to solve for, over sine of 63. Okay? I'm going to multiply this sine of 63 over. And now I can say B is equal to this fraction times the sine of 63. And if you want to put a little B1 just to stay consistent. And now plug that in your calculator to get B. All right, so when you put that in your calculator, it should look something like this, and you should get 18.042, okay? 18.042. And again, that was B1, so I'm going to put that right here. Oops. And I finish this question. All right, here's our next example. Let's start off by filling out what we know. So we know capital A is 69 degrees, little a is 12, and little b is 15. So the way I know I'm testing for two possible triangles is because I have a match and I'm left looking for an angle. So I'm gonna set up my second possible triangle. And my givens work the same for both. All right. So now that I've set up the possibility of two triangles, I'm going to start by solving the first angle that I can, which in this case, I have the match for A and then I have a piece of B. So I can set up sine of B over little b, which is 15, equals sine of 69 over 12. Multiply this 15 over. And then to isolate that capital B, I want to do the inverse sign. To the other side, and then I'm going to plug that into my calculator. So when you plug it in, your calculator should look something like this. Okay, it gives you an error. Um, sometimes your screen might also look like that. Error, domain. That means that the values that was going to come out wouldn't have worked in the triangle, which means that this is a no triangle. And that is literally your final answer. You can cross out both of them. Okay? 
Now, I would always suggest that you go back and double check your calculator to make sure you put all your numbers in correct because you could get an error from just putting the numbers in wrong. Okay? Last question for today. Let's look at this one. So let's start off, as always, by filling in what we know. We know angle A is 58 degrees. Side A is 22. And side C is 24.1. The fact that I see that I have a match with the A's lets me know I'm doing a law of sine. And that I have an angle missing means that I have to check for a possibility of two triangles. So I'm going to set up my second chart. And again, the givens will be true for both triangles. Okay. This question, um, we're going to start off up here with trying to find angle C. So we're going to set up what we know. We're going to say sine of C over side C is equal to the ratio of A, so sine of 58 degrees over 22. I'm going to multiply that 24.1 over. And then to isolate this C, because there's a sign stuck to it, I want to do the inverse operation. So I'm going to say angle C is equal to inverse sine, bless you, of this entire fraction, 24.1 times sine 58 degrees over 22. Okay. So when you plug that into your calculator, you should get this right here. Um, we're going to round that to 68 degrees. Now, let's start color coding. I'm going to call this one down here a blue triangle. Okay. So my next step is to try and solve for that same exact angle, but in my blue triangle, in my second triangle. So the rule that we had written in our notes to find C2 is to say 180 minus the C that I found in the first triangle. And that gives us 112 degrees. I have a positive number in between 0 and 180, so that is okay. Okay. Next, I'm going to use the 180 rule to find the third and last angle for both triangles. Okay. So for triangle 1, I'm going to solve for B1 by saying 180 minus the other two. And then for B in triangle two, I'm gonna do the same exact thing. 180 minus 58 minus 112. As long as I get a positive angle between zero and 180, I'm good. All right, when you plug these in your calculator, you should get 54 degrees, and you should be getting 10 degrees, okay? Both are positive values between 0 and 80. So I found B1, and I found B2. 
All right, this means that both triangle one and triangle two are going to work. So all I have to do now is finish finding little b for triangle one and finding little b for triangle two. Okay. So my setup to find little b for triangle one, I'm going to say little b over sine of 54 is equal to, remember to always use the match that was fully given to you in case you made a mistake down here. And even the fact that we rounded this to 68, it could throw up our answer. So I'm going to use A. I'm going to multiply that sine of 54 over. And I can say B equals 22 times sine of 54 over sine of 58. And then I'll go to my calculator for that in a minute. Let me go doing the setup. I'm going to put a little B1 on all of these. I'm going to do the same exact thing for B2. So I can say B2 over sine of 10 degrees equals the match for that triangle with A. 22 over sine of 58. Multiply this denominator over. And I have B2. So B2 equals 22 times sine of 10 over sine of 58 degrees. All right, let's go to our calculator for both of these. So for this left one, for B1, when you plug this in your calculator, it gives you a, a pretty ugly fraction, okay? And remember, let's, let's see it here. Here's B1, okay? It gives you this ugly fraction, but you always have the option of changing it to a decimal. And the way you do that is by pressing your math button, which is right here, math, and then number two should say DEC, which stands for decimal. So you get 20.98 for little b1. And then when you plug in little b2's fraction, you get 4.5, okay? Plug those in where they belong. Okay, I'm just going to finish color coding, but we are done with this question. This was the scenario that we saw two full triangles. So again, the first one, only one triangle worked out. The second one was no triangle, nothing worked out. And then this third one was a two triangle, everything worked out. Okay, so the three scenarios you can see with the ambiguous cases. Again, you find these by having to do law of sine because you have a match, and then you have to find the angle first.